Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome to another video. There's been a little bit of a gap between videos on this series, the Build Reliant Damaged. Um, that's because I was thinking about how to improve the quality and the detail of the ship. Now, it is small. It's 1 1,000th scale. And I decided to get something, and I was waiting for something, and it came in. So I get to show you guys today from our friends from Paragraphics. So I'm going to show you what we got, the photo etch set, and how we're going to use it to enhance the USS Reliant. So why don't we take it over to the desk, we'll have a look, and I'll show you what's in the set. Okay, so let's open up what we got from Paragraphics. Let's see. Show you guys and we've been looking forward to getting this in right. we've got our packing slip and we've got the set and everything all right now it may not look like much but wait till I tell you some of the stuff we're gonna get to do with the Reliant on here so let me show you guys So this was uh, $21.95, and it was for PGX187, which is the Reliant Photo Wedge set in 1 1,000th scale. And the shipping and handling was $540, and the total was $27.35. So let's take a look. Now, you guys may be wondering, well, for $27, it doesn't look like a lot, but let me show you guys. I mean, this is not a huge kit. This is relatively small, especially the nacelles. You can see the chiller grills on the inside. See how small that is? And the thought, I mean, it could be done to go in and paint the ridges and it's not impossible, but let me show you one of the awesome things about this is we've got the, the photo etch. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna go onto the, the way we're gonna do it is can you see that? So what we'll do is we'll paint the chiller grill and then we'll put it on and we'll paint the color of the clear plastic in uh, transparent paint. But anyway, we'll get to that. Let's show you guys USS Reliant Photo Etch set for Polar Lights, kit number POL906-12. This is from Paragraphics. This is the Photo Etch set. And this has a super detail for the 1 1,000th scale Reliant kit from Polar Lights with the updated and missing details, including warp and impulse engine grills, bridge deck airlock, and more. Window drilling templates make lighting a breeze, electronics not included. Now again, and it shows the paragraphics.biz, their website. Now again, one of the things I wanted this for was I wanted to be able to get the template for the windows because I'm doing the uh, the Enterprise, the relaunch, or the reissue of the one, um, was it 537 scale? Or the 1650 scale of the actual, the original Enterprise. And I've been drilling and I had a hard time seeing the outlines and it just, it came out terrible. So that's why I said, you know what? I'm not gonna screw this up. So what I'll do is we'll put the template on, 
be able to drill it and then it'll be uh, accurate. There are other things that I want that I liked about this that we're going to get to, but let me show you guys the instructions. And again, I'll, I'll put them up because I always put the instructions up for you guys. But let's take out the, the cardboard. USS Reliant, photo etch set, paragraphics, PGX187. All right, the introduction. Thank you for purchasing paragraphics photo etch enhancement set for the Polar Lights 11000 scale Reliant model kit. We have made every effort to ensure that these parts can be used successfully by the modeler of modest experience, but there may be items that require advanced modeling techniques for the beginning uh, for basic primer on the use of photo etch please visit and it shows you guys the website and paragraphics biz instructions asp materials in addition to the photo etch you will also need scissors a knife to remove individual pieces from the main fret a file to remove material from the after the cutting super glue Additionally, to fold some pieces, you will need a pair of razor blades or a special photo etch tool for bending. I do have the paragraphic photo etch uh, bending tool. It's uh, let's see, it's up here somewhere. Anyway, we'll get. I'll show you guys that later. And the kit has one part, and that's just a photo etch. Let's see. Moving on to step one, we've got the shuttle bays. Now this is a big reason why I got this. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. On the back of the USS Reliant, they have two shuttle bays in the back of the ship. See, I don't want to snap this together. And they're like big doors, one and two. And I was thinking how I could possibly get the lights around it in order to light that. But with this, it kind of fixes the problem because we're going to remove the tabs that are going to go on the back and we're going to insert their doors. And in addition to the doors, they have the area that goes around the door. So the light will filter through in the exact spots that the um, the shuttle bay doors are lighted on screen. So this is the main reason why I got this, because because of the detail. This, as well as the, um, the warp engine grills. The shuttle bays, remove existing doors. Cut the existing shuttle bay doors off from the back side of the kit, part five. So we're gonna have to remove the, um, the doors as well. Uh, tip to remove the four triangle details at this time as well. You can see these right there Sand to grind those off Assemble the shuttle bay doors fold both at photo etch 19 in a trapezoidal shape is shown and attached to door 6 part 6 Attach shuttle bay inserts insert the assembled shuttle bays into the holes cut in the knife uh, part note that you likely need to adjust the opening for a good fit so You can see where the areas of light are going to filter and of course we're going to light it um, It'll come through and it'll look more like the screen and don't forget the movie the model for the movie was I, I think it was like Seven or eight feet. I could be wrong, but I know it was somewhere in the in that range It was a really big model and to do this on a 11000 scale, it's going to be a little harder because, you know, it looks gigantic on camera and in the instructions. But let me see if I can find the actual shuttle bay doors to show you guys. You said this kit doesn't have a whole lot of parts. Um, all 
All right, so we've got the bridge, sensor dome, and we have the, the nacelles. Oh, here it is, I'm sorry. So you can see how they're recessed. Now, because they are recessed, I thought, well, you know, it might not be that bad to just leave them the way they are and drill holes. But I figured with the photo etch, I'll show you it in a minute, it'll be more screen-like. It'll just look better. And then we can paint the photo etch. So, like I said, <clears throat> the selling points were the bay doors and moving on to the next step is another reason why I wanted to get this. Warp engine grills. Assemble the warp engine nacelles per kit instructions in step four, then attach etch parts one and two, starboard and port respectively over the clear insert. Lighting tip. If you'll be lighting the warp engines, cut out the area behind the clear inserts. Parts 107 and 108. And we're gonna light, absolutely we're gonna light the end uh, chiller grills. Moving on, we've got the rear details. Complete the final assembly of the ship. Note that if you are lighting the kit, you will want to do all your modifications before the final assembly. We've got the impulse engines. You'll be lighting the impulse engines, cut out the plastic behind the kit, parts 105 and 106, and attach etch parts eight and nine over the clear inserts. And we've got the officer's lounge. If lighting, remove plastic from kit part four to allow the light come through. The docking port. Attach the docking port, photo etch part 14, to the rear of kit part three. The triangles. Attach the triangles, etch parts 10 and 15 in the location shown. You will need to remove the raised kit detailing if it hasn't already been done. Note the parts 10 and 15 are not identical. They're a little bit different. These will go around the doors and this one will go on the side as that one. The corner grills attach the etch parts three and four to the corners covering the kit detailing. Note that the ridge side should face in. Let's see what they're gonna go on the sides. And when it comes to the windows, I like the, uh, the templates. All right. Tape the window guides into position. Note that all but number 14 are used at least twice. The guides may be used as drilling guides for positioning optic fibers. Uh, let's see, 0 .0, 0 0.02 inches or half a millimeter drill bit or painting templates. Note, the triangular alignment points on each parts fit uh, 5 and 16. These are for alignment to the deflector shield grid lines, upper lines highlighted in part 16. Uh, where's part? Here it is. These are for alignment to the deflector shield grids. Okay, we said that. And attached docking ports centered on both sides. So this is going to be, um, again, it's going to make it more accurate because I don't know if we can actually see. Yeah, the model kit itself doesn't have any of the, um, the windows in the plastic. So with this, we'll be able to tape these on and we'll be able to drill and we'll be able to do all the windows. It'll be a lot better. Even up on the top and on the bottom, you can see we're gonna to need to use, there's only one part supply, but we're gonna do the, um, the three sections around the sensor dome. And you can see paragraphics. Paragraphics Incorporated, Attleboro, Massachusetts, 02703 USA. And it shows the website. So this is gonna be fun to put these little goodies in. 
So let's actually take a look at the sheet. And I love how they put it on white cardboard so we can kind of check it out. You can see the registry numbers. Hopefully this all comes out on camera for you. So let's see if I get something. Yeah, we'll point with this. So you can see the registry numbers, the USS Reliant NCC-1864. And we have, this is gonna go around the, the, um, this section up on top, around the bridge. Um, we have these sections that are gonna go onto the side. Um, let's see, we've got the part five. This is gonna go where the sensor dome area is, and it's gonna go around the bottom. Um, let's see, these triangle pieces are actually gonna go around the shuttle bay doors. And speaking of the shuttle bay doors, all right, so I guess these are the shuttle bay doors. They go around the shuttle bay doors. It just kind of threw me because they weren't straight. And as for the doors themselves, um, I thought they might've had the numbers on them, but I guess not. Um, let me see if, I don't remember if the decals actually have the numbers that go on the back. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, they do. That's right. So this will look pretty cool. We can picture this um, once it's on and the photo etches around it and the little areas that are light up around the doors will look pretty nice. Maybe that's why they didn't put the numbers on the photo etch because they're already on the decal sheet. And you can see some of the damage we are going through. And you guys see the, the, the uh, decal and the windows. Let's see if they match up. Um, let's see, it'll be right there. Looks like they match up. All right, so moving on. Again, the main reason I got this was for the nacelles, the chiller grills, the grid lines, and the, uh, the shuttle bay doors where the lighting is gonna come through really nice. And the window templates are an added bonus. That's gonna be nice. What we do is we tape them on the side and obviously I'll do this before we paint. Um, we'll tape them on and I'm gonna use the micro drill bit. And what's nice about the, the photo etch is we can actually do the rectangle ones as well um, without actually worrying about ruining the plastic like I did for the Enterprise. I'll show you guys the back. This is gonna go behind the bridge area. I hope the camera picks that up. The little docking area and we have a little it's at the officer's lounge that would go in the back on the top um, let's see we got the windows Oh, these are the, the side grills that are gonna go on the sides, the back of the ship. And we got the impulse engine grills. That'll be nice, cause see the, how small the detail is? And what we can do is we can paint that black 
and then we can overlay it onto the plastic. We can actually paint the plastic. All right. Let's see, we got the torpedo launcher. And there they are. I know it's not easy to see because of the camera angle, but we'll be able to put those on. The windows, the sides, and on the back. Let's see, what am I missing? Um, parts 20, what are those? Again. That's gonna go on the side of the primary hull. So we got one for each side. And this goes on the back of the ship. And that looks about it. This was released in 2014, by the way. And we might use that for the base, I'm not sure. We'll see. But this is awesome. Um, we got a lot of a lot of things out of this kit. In addition to the detail, we, we've got the templates for the windows and we have a bunch of stuff that's really gonna help bring out the ship. And when you're making a model this small, every little bit helps. Because you think of the, the studio model, like I said, the thing was gigantic. The Enterprise model was, what, 11 feet? Or 10 feet? Or not, it was somewhere around there. And I think this was close to the same size. So this was really big. But still has pretty good detail considering it's a 1-1000 kit. But this is going to be fun. So I think what we're going to do in the next video is I'm actually going to start drilling out the windows. We'll use the templates and we'll make sure everything is okay. Uh, maybe before we even do that, we should prep the inside of the kit. We'll do the silver. And I like to use, let's see, where is it? I don't have the can available to me. Oh, here it is. I like to use the Rust-Oleum, the metallic finish. And that way there, everything will reflect nicely in the ship. So my friends, I thank you for watching. And this little update video, let me get the label. I'll show you guys the photo etch. This is what I was waiting for. In the next video, we're gonna start to put the templates on and will drill out for the windows. So my friends, I thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.